What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the Electric Production. I'm Jay and today we're going to be playing Caveman Warriors. Caveman Warriors is sort of a throwback title to the NES slash Super NES era. This game reminds me heavily from the very little bit I've played of Adventure Island, a game that was very popular on the NES and did have a sequel on the Super NES, I think a couple of them actually, but this game reminds me very much of those games. It's a lot of fun, if not overly simplistic. And what I mean exactly, I will show you right after the intro. Okay, so, Caveman Warriors. Let's take a quick look here. We've got options. Options are very simple in this game, but... As I've said in the past, if you have a bad options menu screen, that's usually a telltale sign that your game's not very good. And in this game, the option menu, although simplistic and not having many options on display, it's it's done quite well. So I don't have any real issues with it. There are comics that you can unlock in the game as you progress through it. So that's always kind of a nice little bonus. But let's jump into the meat and potatoes here. You can see I've got 0% complete. I typically just try a game out to make sure that it's going to work okay. Uh, and after that, I go ahead and turn it off and then try to do sort of an initial playthrough so you can get my, my opinion on the game as I play it. So we've got an alien here coming to Earth. It looks like he's interested in our cave children. And there is said alien. Stealing said children. All right, so there's our motivation. Our kids have been stolen. You can press LB or RB to change character. Okay, so we can change our character here. Very nice. Super jump is done by holding the up button. And it looks like coconuts are filled with all kinds of goodies. So we can jump down from platforms by holding the down key. Now I noticed that I could do damage by jumping on top of the coconuts. So can I do damage? I can. So we've got Adventure Island mixed with Mario here. So we've got lots of options for taking out the enemies. Right trigger to perform special attack and left trigger to use your skill. Let's just jump on the coconut. Oh! I immediately regret my decision. Okay, so you don't... Oh no, I kind of did bounce on top of them there. Special attacks and skills cost stamina. If you lose all the stamina, you'll get exhausted. You've got a little water spout here. And they're letting us know that cavemen cannot swim. Fair enough. Whoa. I almost ended myself there. I'm not crazy about the jump mechanic, and all I mean is I would have preferred to have... So we need the character that has the spear. There we go. For the jump mechanic, I would have preferred to have seen um, where it's... Whoa! Where it's pressure sensitive. So if you hold the jump key, you jump higher, and if you let go of it then you jump more shallow. Whoa! I am getting, uh... Kind of getting wrecked here. So as you can see, this game is not offering, you know, intense... Nope. It's not offering intense complexity. It's, it's really offering more of a basic side-scroller in sort of a retro fashion. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you if you kind of miss the days of old where side scrollers were more simplistic, then this is going to be right up your alley. Uh, if you're looking for a game that's not going to require as much thought and attention to detail, then again, this may be your cup of tea. But if you're looking, whoa! If you're looking for something that Oh, it's more of a, a direction. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, man. Okay, okay, we got this. We're all right. So your character does get exhausted if you expend all of your stamina with your special moves. 
So it's a little tough here. When you jump, you have to anticipate the enemy throwing... Is that a Mario cap? You have to anticipate the enemy throwing something at you, because more than likely they will. So you have to be ready, kind of like that. And enemies turn very aggressive if you move onto their plane. Now, I don't... I don't dislike the art style at all. And... I don't like... Or, excuse me, I don't dislike the enemy design. All of those are a positive here. The enemies are a bit on the repetitive side, just that there's the same enemy quite often. Nope. Let's get a throw ready here. No! Ran out of stamina at the wrong time. throw that because my stamina is going to run out then. I'm going to let my stamina recharge. Do a false jump. Let's try to get this, whatever it is. Oh, I done messed up. That was just me being overly eager there because you can... This character seems to be a little on the OP side with her throw. Landing on enemies' heads is sort of nice because it affords you... Oh, I am out of... I'm out of... It affords you the ability to jump and not have to worry about landing a shot upon hitting the ground. You can kind of just... As long as you've got good landing precision, then you're in good shape. Yeah, it looks like Mario caps in the game. The drop. <laughs> Traded shots there. If you can get the timing down on the throw, it helps a lot. Boy, that fatigue, though, it'll kill you. go. It's, it's kind of sad, really, because it's it, it's not a bad game at all. Um, it's just, in today's day and age, with so many complex... Whoa! With so many complex side-scrollers, I fear that it's not going to do very well. Just based off the fact that it's Kind of a simpler side scroller. But with it being simpler, it does not automatically make it easier. I mean, it has a level of challenge to it. I'd like to get that chicken. Oh, okay. So we've got our first boss here Undyne, Queen of the Thorns. Okay, all right, so we don't want to stand right there when she fires off that acid. We've got thorns. Okay, so I think I've got this down. And those spitters suck. You've got like a very small window of opportunity to get them. I'm just going to get in close. Okay, we found a hidden area there. That's kind of cool. We got banana peel. And here we are. We're at the boss again. Not too much of a backtrack there. Alright, so it looks like for this boss fight, what we're going to want to do is... Let's get closer where the spit can't hit us. And we'll hit that. And then it looks like I want to get up here. Nope, I was wrong. So 
on that one, she spit first. So we bested her just barely. I had almost no health left. Is that it? Okay, we just... Do we... No? Do we? Yes? There we go. Level cleared. Once we clear it, we managed to get the batteries. There was one in that hidden area and one near the waterfall or whatever it was. And we move on to the next area, which is Death Mountain. What do I think of this game overall? You know, I, I think what I said before kind of stands true, unfortunately. Um, I think this is a game where where it's been lovingly crafted by its dev team and they were looking to make something that was retro in nature. I think they did a great job, I really do. But unfortunately, I feel like... Got it. Okay, so the skills here... Man, those are getting really annoying. It seems like as the, as the game goes on, it's actually trying to utilize some of the skill sets a little bit more. Okay, so you can, you can jump with it. So, I mean, that's, that's, you guys get the gist of this game. It doesn't seem like it's a bad game whatsoever. In fact, quite the opposite. I'd say it's a good game. If you're looking for a simplistic 2D side-scroller that's got sort of a retro nature to it, this would be right up your alley. I don't have any issues with it. I don't have any qualms with it. It's going to take practice. I think that you could tell the dev team here spent a lot of time, effort, and energy making something where it's got attention to detail, good colors to it, some additional content like the comics good menus. I don't have any real complaints or issues, however I do fear that this game is going to very quickly fall into obscurity with a slew of much flashier games that are available on Steam almost every day. So I would say if you get the chance and you're interested in this, help the dev team out a little bit and buy this game. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the price is off the top of my head, I think it was like $12. I'll be honest with you, I'd wait for a sale on this one just because this isn't necessarily one that I would just run out and buy for $12. I think $5 to $6 is more along the price that I would want to pay for this. And I know that's probably sad because the devs probably put way more than just $5 per person worth of effort and work into this title. But you know what? It's a very saturated market right now and that's just sort of how things are. Guys, that's going to do it for this video. I know it's a super quick one, but it's a pretty simplistic game and I just wanted to cover it. I try to touch on those games on Steam that look like they've got good potential, but aren't getting a lot of reviews and this one fit the bill perfectly. You guys have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing all of you on the next Electric Productions. Bye.